hope y'all are well. I think I have one of the coolest jobs in the world. So yeah, I get to do some a lot of cool things. I get to go to a lot of cool events. I've traveled the United States, even the world, just because of sports photography. Yeah, and it's really cool. It's been a passion of mine. I've gotten into it for, I've been in it for about six years, doing it freelance professionally. But then prior to that, just doing it for fun for about another three, which is at nine years. So yeah, I'll just get straight into it. So I'm going to kind of just talk about what, to me, makes a great sports image and what elements all come with it. So yeah, it's about the ball, I think. Um, with sports photography, there's always something going on. There's never really a dull moment. And so you have, so pretty much anything always centered happens around the ball. That's usually where the eye goes. That's where the cameras on the broadcast TV go. Every action like happens around the ball. Even if there's not a ball or there's even, even if the action's not with the ball, usually there's something going around the ball. Apparently this is a foul in soccer though. And yeah, you get to see some cool moments. You get to see like, we get to see y'all college athletes that get to participate, pour y'all's heart, blood, sweat, and tears out on the uh, respective floor. And then we get to document it, which is really cool. Um, yeah. And so like, usually you can find a good story that happens around the ball and we'll get into that some other elements later. So with every action has a reaction. And with that, you kind of notice along the times that sports are human endeavors. All athletes are humans too. Y'all are humans as well. It's kind of one of those things where you're able to just be at, at its essence, the athletes are humans and you usually get feelings from faces, which is kind of cool because you get to see really who these people are minus all the like pads and stuff. So usually like with all the pads and stuff, they kind of look, they kind of look intense. Football players can have that intense look, but take away the pads and stuff and you get, you get stuff like this usually all the time. And some questions I ask myself is when we are shooting is, can we feel the emotion in the photo? Can we, can, does this communicate something with, and that evokes emotion? So like with this, her smile and her clapping, it just all kind of made sense for me to submit this. Same here, people hugging, everyone loves a good uh, emotional shot. And that's something that I kind of focus on. And so with that, though, with Newton's third law of every action has a reaction, there's always the thrill of victory. This is a rare photo because you never see this man smiling. So that's pretty cool. You get to see, like, people get out of their comfort zone. You get to see people in their, like, true, truest happy moments. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but you get to see people at their peak. You get to see people be emotional see all their hard work pay off. You get to see champions get crowned. I realized I never went a little bit about my background, kind of where I came from. I was a student athlete at a division two school at Texas A&M Commerce. I ran track and field and cross country there. And that's kind of how I got my start. Basically that y'all don't get a lot of content. And I was wanting some content of our athletes because I knew like, okay, we're, we're working the same amount as football. We're, we have, we're on the same schedule. And so it's just kind of one of those things of how can we get better as a department? And I was like, hey, I'm not the greatest photographer, but I can take better photos than what you're doing. And quite frankly, y'all aren't sending anyone, so let's get to it. And so he trusted me with a camera for some reason. And then he ended up just saying, go have, have some creative freedom. And so I started out at Commerce. And then I graduated college. I moved out to Utah for a bit. Um, and basically what I did there was not what I was told. So I moved back and I decided to pursue freelance. Freelance has provided me with some of the greatest opportunities such as MLS soccer. I don't know if I have any of the Mavericks here. I got to work with the Dallas Mavs, got to work with some professional NBA teams and some professional teams. This was the MLS cup this year. Um, and then so finally, like, I kind of got tired of doing that for a little bit and one second and decided to go uh, back into the full-time position role and work at Stephen F. Austin, where we were, where I was the social media manager, but also the lead photographer. I was there from 2019 to 2021. And basically what we did was we basically covered every event. We got to see championships. We got to see 
people lose, which is unfortunate. It's the reality. Um, more championships. And so kind of what uh, the cool part of this part was it took me a lot of cool places that I never thought I would have. And then I decided to leave and move up here to Portland to where it was it was a no-brainer for me to go freelance. I have a lot more flexibility. This was Sunday's game for the Thorns and the Wave. Got to shoot, work with the Wave. And that's another cool thing. A lot of my work, um, yes, there's times where I work for the home team, but also another aspect of, the, of doing freelance is covering the away team. Um, I think a lot of people don't utilize that aspect as much as they should. And so, like, with this, I just happened to be in Vegas. This was the Pac-12 championship. And previously, working with Stanford before, they, they contracted me out, and we got to celebrate them going to the big dance. Um, always looking for a smile on the face, always looking for faces. However, being a sports photographer, I think oftentimes we forget to look at the agony of defeat. Um, this was a season-ending loss in Memphis where they got blown out. Um, and this was probably, I'm assuming this was the player's last game. Um, shit happens. Um, it's life. We end up losing and we end up learning from those losses. Um, this was another, this was another season ending loss. Um, this, I'm not sure exactly what happened. Same stuff. Last game of this player's career. Same thing here. Um, a couple of things that I always try to challenge myself is to see differently. And what that means is, means getting up high when everyone's like shooting uh, eye level. Same thing here. If everyone's just trying to like shoot, like how can you shoot differently? So with this, I was trying to like raise the camera up and get the shot. It's a little bit wider, but it is cropped in um, due to social purposes. This one here, how can I... How can I utilize what we have? Everyone else was over here shooting up. Just kind of shoot eye level and hopefully try and get lucky and fill the frame. Same thing here. Decided to shoot up on the press box. You wouldn't know that there's probably 20 people in this gym just based off this. Um, and if that also means getting in the huddle if you're close enough with that team. Uh, with this team, uh, this was probably the first team when I moved up to Portland, I got to cover fully. And so I felt like I was able to build that rapport with these athletes to be able to like, all right, get in with these moments. Same thing, shoot above. I'm a big, uh, big sucker for use of negative space. And is this a digital photography or design class or both? Digital, digital photography. Okay. So like with a lot of designers, um, I know so, I know designers love this because you have a lot of so negative space to where it's just a cutout and you're able to like add a lot of text here. Um, same thing here. I always try to figure, always look at the composition as well. Basically what I mean by that is the rule of thirds and how can you utilize what the space you have. Um, and also look at the elements that you have around you. This kind of tells the whole story just like that. It's a volleyball player. She's serving at Houston. It's pretty utilizing those elements that you do have around you. Um, and when you're at these bigger events, such as March Madness, such as tournaments or NCAA nationals, they make it real easy. But also you got to look at what isn't on the field. Seeing differently. Get capturing the fans. They're a big aspect of the of the event going on. Um, but back to this, I kind of just utilize, they make it really easy. I'm trying to see if there's any others that show that, that's the background. But I think I get into it later on how the backgrounds matter. So we'll wait on that. Um, but yeah, just kind of look at framing, kind of figuring out, okay, if everyone's down here, where can I go to get a different image? Cause at the end of the day, Y'all are all competing against each other, but you're also competing against yourself. How can you get better every day? Um, a lot of people choose to be Kobe, work countless hours, don't sleep much, always trying to do their best. I'd rather be AI, um, Alan Iverson, who has a little, who's a little more um, vocal in a couple of areas, but also 
he's a lot more out there. He's going to try a lot more different things that are unpopular in the public's eyes. So always got to figure out your style as well. Um, but with using your access, you're able to get moments a lot more in there are a lot more moments to be able to see, like, how can you look at it differently? Um, I'm, just, yeah, I'm looking at my notes and trying to figure out. While we shoot, like, always give 100%. People say give 110%. I'd rather you give your all and not burn out versus burn out and then never pick up a camera again because you're trying to go hard for X amount of time. Like, using your access, you get it. You get to complete the story, I feel like, and this kind of helps um, tell a story. It's more so of looking at the players and trying to get them in their zone and their element and more so of a natural state rather than posed. So how can we utilize the access that we have to be able to tell our story a lot better and a lot more clear? This image is kind of cool. It's one of my personal favorites just because this individual right here, um, excuse me, she tore her ACL mid-season and she was having surgery right before the, right before they were about to play. And so she decided if she wanted to FaceTime in with her teammates and just kind of go over the pregame. So it's like kind of one of those things of always on the job, but always like wanting to support your team. But also you get a lot of cool stuff such as walk-in shots, um, without spending too much time on this, I think walking shots are probably my favorite. You get to see the athletes as who they are. You get to see their style. You get to see them just kind of as in the most human nature. Like we get, we talked about a little bit how humans are or how athletes are human endeavors. And then I think these shots give the best uh, example of that. Um, it's always practicing, but also like faces matter. Boom. You can kind of tell a lot about what's going on with an image just based off looking at the faces. And also that's what people, that's what the audience connects to is the face. Sometimes there's not, sometimes they don't, but 95% of the time, I believe they'll connect with the human face, especially if this is your team. Um, you'll be able to kind of just see the, you see the shock here. You see a little bit here with her eyes and her trying to call a timeout. Um, you see the thrill of victory over here. I did not realize I used this image already, but again, it's a, backgrounds matter. Uh, Y'all can tell this is a locker room, but also like this image, I don't think if he's smiling as big as he is, I don't think this is as strong. Same here, like if the face isn't, if the face isn't there, this image isn't as strong. Um, Faces tell a story, emotions do. I think a lot of the times we get so caught up in the moment that it's hard to forget, hey, like we're still on the job. We're still trying to get into the, we're still trying to cut, tell a story overall. Um, a couple of things like for me that I always try to do is I always try to make one great photograph a game. I don't think this was it. I think I would have probably cleaned this up a little more. Um, let me see if I can find one real quick i'd probably say this one was probably one of my favorites this one just because of how different it is these any of these celebration shots i'm a big fan of especially for the stanford game uh i, was, I felt like i was on top of my stuff there um and so it's kind of one of those things of how it can also tell a story how the images even if they're not like this, like, I'm going to just pause real quick because I know where, exactly where this image is. Um, and come over here and try and show y'all real quick how even like, even without the faces that are there, you're still able to tell a story. Um, but yeah, like for now, like what questions do y'all have? Well, I put pause. If not, it's cool. I can continue. Any questions so far? No, you can't. You can move on. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, 
so yeah, like it's kind of one of those things. Uh, I'll share this screen again. Uh, just pause. So here, like even without having a clear face, if you can get somewhat of the face, it can still kind of tell a story. Her looking up. Um, after talking with her, it was kind of one of those cool things of being able to share, like she, we were talking about it and she's like, yeah, that, that image made me seem like it was like my kid, like I was accomplishing a dream. Um, which is kind of a cool piece to all of this is like, you get to see these athletes for more than just athletes. That's probably my favorite part of this job is being able to be like, hey, like these aren't just athletes. These aren't just people that just spend their time on the court. Like y'all, y'all know the athlete stereotype and it's more than that. You get to see them at their true essence. Um, so kind of one of those things, um, we've already seen these. So something that like uh, y'all's professor asked me in the when we were first talking about this was what awards I've won. And I've kind of learned over the years, like um, that your work, that you are not your assignment and you're not just your work. Um, well, having some imposter syndrome with all that, be, I'm gonna be fully transparent. Like it's part of the job sometimes. Um, that doesn't make it okay. That doesn't normalize it, but it does happen. Um, and so that's kind of like, for me, I've learned over the years that the assignment that I'm handed and the assignment that I'm that I'm working in my work, it does not define me. Like just because uh, I win a contest that does not define who I am. I'm still in the end of the day, me. Same thing with y'all um, as athletes and y'all probably understand this a lot more than if y'all were um, normal students. Like the losses, they don't define you. You get better, rejection sucks and you go back and you work hard the next day. Um, and it's kind of making, and like as a division two school, like I, I hope y'all can relate, but like making the big time where you're at, no, you're not on a flashy stage. Like this is an older gym versus let's see, I think I skipped over this photo it, versus a well-lit arena where it's very easy to take an image and have a great, have great, like great elements with it and so it's trying to like treat every event with the same like energy and that same performance that y'all have um because you don't know where this is going to lead you I never thought shooting the Southland Conference SFA versus McNeese would lead me to the final four and it also like it I don't know it's been a really cool journey for me something that is very important is my background backgrounds matter in every aspect so no, this isn't a direct action shot. Uh, I guess it is, but it's just without a ball. It's just a different sport. Backgrounds help tell a story. If you're familiar with the NBA and you're familiar with Rip City, you know this is in Portland. Um, sometimes backgrounds are get crisp and you need to be able to have a different background. And this is an example of why backgrounds do matter. And you wanna try and fill your frame as tight as possible. Um, because this does show that there's about 20 people in the stands. If one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven. Not eleven people in the stands here, but you also have the, these as background pieces. Hopefully, um, hopefully your eye comes here. But there's like there there's a rare time where you get the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat all in one image. And there, I think both of mine that I've shown in here are soccer. Backgrounds also help tell where you're at. You can tell this is a locker room, I'm hoping. Um, but it also like helps you with your brand if you're working as a team photographer. So how can you use the background elements to be able to help tell your story a little better? Boom, you know exactly where you are. You're at Portland, it's home of the pilots and this is the best student section with 12 people. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it kind of plays a big part of your image, I believe. And sometimes I, most of the time I usually try to have a clear idea, but sometimes you get busy backgrounds like this. And so this is what I mean by seeing differently. Like there's, with these kind of events, you have a hundred photographers right behind me. 
And then you have like the people with the special access. And the reality is you're not always gonna get that access. Um, this also helps tell the story. Like it gives you a sense of placement where you spoke can. Um, March Madness, first and second rounds, Georgia State versus Gonzaga. Um, and it's kind of use it, how do you utilize these elements to be able to take that one great photo that you're wanting to do, change your perspective and be able to just make a kick-ass photo for lack of a better phrase, apologize my language. Um, but yeah, I mean, you kind of get intricate moments in the background. And so, yeah, um, I think that was a lot faster than what it was planned to be. Um, so I apologize for that. I think y'all will have a little extra time. But so kind of like some key like tips I always have is like, always keep your eyes wide open. You never know what you're gonna see. Um, and so this is what I mean by shooting differently. We'll go over these images. Like, you never know what you, someone once told me you never know what you see until you go over there and see it. So you don't ever know what this shot looks like until you go up and see it from this point of view. Um, and that's kind, of, that's kind of a mantra I've carried with me. Um, throughout my life is always try and look for different angles. Always try and see things differently and see things better. There's a few images here that I'm like extremely proud of. And that's just because like, it's one of those things I wouldn't have known without going out and seeing differently. And then and a couple of other things to add on the user access. Like if you're doing this as a freelance journalist, you probably won't get the same access. But if you're the team photographer, capitalize on that help tell the story because most of the time these athletes y'all know this like y'all want y'all want y'all's lives documented uh some of y'all are a little some of y'all might be a little more camera shy I don't know y'all but from my experience most of the time athletes they love when they're the camera's on them and they're there's one player here I don't think I have any photos of him in his uh in this presentation but every time he sees me he'll always just kind of uh switch up real quick and act differently um, just because there's a camera there. Um, like he's actually gonna try, he's actually gonna be able to do your thing, do his thing as an athlete. Um, and then another thing like I didn't really touch on is like shit does happen. And to be able to control the controllables, um, like there's gonna be times where you blow focus. There's gonna be times where you accidentally format your card uh, after an event, like my first event for University of Portland, um, don't have any images for University of Portland was a soccer game. And I ended up formatting the card because I had to shoot the next day um, without getting any of their images. So it's just kind of like, well, control the controllables, protect your team as well. So like most of the time, you're, you probably won't be working independently, even as a freelancer, if you go the team photographer route. Um, even if you go the journalist route, you'll be working with an editor. Um, for me, I work with a designer. I work with a social media team as well. Um, and so it's one of those things of, okay, how can you protect your team? How can you help give them the best? How can you make their life easier? That's something I always try and do and look out for each other. Um, so if you know the social media manager doesn't want a busy background, this probably wouldn't be the image. This might be just because there's not much going on in the background, but it's kind of one of those things of figuring out, okay, what's going to make other people's lives easier? Because at the end of the day, we are providing a service. Um,